Hello and welcome to the Rose Gallery. My name is Rachel Simkis and I am really excited to be joining you guys for the launch of the artwork of Christian Hook. In 2010, I had the huge honour of meeting Christian Hook, having found a little painting squirreled away in an antique shop down one of the main streets in Gibraltar. I asked if I could meet and see the talent behind this incredible painting. And within two hours, he was sitting next to me at the Jury's Inn in Gibraltar. This incredibly talented, I'd say, incredibly talented genius, actually. It was an absolute honour to meet him. Fast forward a couple of years, I decided that we definitely did meet him on our portfolio and he won our Clarendon Fine Art Prize in 2012. By 2013, he'd done his first solo show where we actually were then able to see some of the most incredible talent uh, behind the works of Christian Hook. His ability to paint movement and time was absolutely astounding. 2014, absolutely key year for Christian Hook. In 2014, he entered and won Sky Art's Portrait Artist of the Year. Insane. His prize? To go across the pond to the Big Apple to paint the incredible legend that is Alan Cumming. This portrait was magnificent. This portrait is now hung in the National Portrait Galleries in Scotland and is one of the four that Christian is in actually across the world, which for a living artist, a uh, young living artist is actually an incredible accolade, um, one to which is in his investment guide. I know you will have a copy. Off the back of this incredible series at Sky Ops, which had some of the highest ratings they've ever seen, he then gets commissioned to do another three series. One with Mick Hucknell, the amazing singer-songwriter, Fabrice Mwamba, the amazing footballer that died on the pitch for 78 minutes, and the very talented Sue Johnson. After this amazing support now from the art world, we then get a little bit of slice of the financial world. Christian rings to say, I'm going to be on the front cover of a, an amazing magazine apparently, and I'm doing a, and I'm going to be painting the portrait of this actress. So please can you come and help me? I'm over in Paris. Off we went. Fast forward about three or four months, there we are. He's on the front cover of How to Spend It for the Financial Times with Christian Scott Thomas. There was like an eight-pager uh, of this incredible spread and the most incredible portrait and a beautiful friendship that then came from that. So now we're having the, the financial world supporting this incredible artist, which is, you know, how, how to spend your money? Oh yeah, how to spend your money. Christian Hook, invest in him. Whether it's an emotional investment, whether it's a monetary one, this artist is one of the most exciting journeys anyone has ever taken. By this point, we've got Clarendon Fine Art, we've got the whole of Gibraltar, most of Europe, then we've got the art market, and now we've got the financial market. This guy is flying. The following years saw Christian catapult again within the art market. He was working on his first book, La Buscada, and we decided that we were going to team with the incredible Lord Spencer at his literary festival at his home in Northamptonshire, Hawthorne. It was incredible. I have to say, it was probably one of the highlights of my career, and I know some of our clients absolutely loved it. We took over. He'd been in Asia. He produced this amazing series called the Cheese Series. He produced uh, some most amazing body of work, and we decided that we were going to do it here, and we had thousands of people, thousands of people come, and we decided that we were going to go into Lord Spencer's home, and we decided we'll take down the Van Dykes, which at the time was tricky, 14 million pounds, 20 million pounds. We thought we'll take down the Van Dykes and we're gonna put up his cheese series. And do you know what? He looks absolutely super. We had thousands and thousands of visitors and it really was, I think, one of the, one of the best um, and highest points of his career. As we know, with Christian's work, we see key subjects. His equine subjects are some of the most important to Christian, having lived next door to Andalusia, where he is in Gibraltar, Jerez, Favilla, Cordoba. We see some of the most beautiful dancing Spanish horses throughout his artworks. We also see fragmented memories. Fragmented memories, massive family, very family orientated, family orientated in Gibraltar. So you often see many children within that, within those body of works, and also figurative. Figurative Christian is absolutely key, and you'll often see that and have done over the last few years. However, what we do see is Christian's desire and hunger to achieve and develop on 
So every series he has to develop on. Subject may stay the same, every series. And he rang, rings me up and he says, Rachel, I have an idea. He said, uh, for my next collection, he said, I'm going to paint the invisible. <laughs> so I said, excellent, I'm going to paint the invisible. This is going to be, this is going to be a very uh, interesting presentation to the board. Um, however, do you know what? It was absolutely incredible. He worked with some of the top scientists in the world. He worked with a synesthesiast which obviously paints in uh, all seas in colour and shapes. Uh, and he produced a body of work using a couple who had married, divorced, and then married again, um, using all the different forms of the different senses. And this produced the most incredible body of work, and it was then commissioned by Sky Arts to go live across their channels and across the country. And it was, I'd say, another accolade, another, another string for his bow, and what an amazing achievement. In 2023, we saw Christian Hook painting, I'd say, one of my biggest icons, and I know some of the UK's and world's biggest icon, and this was Dame Judi Dench. Sky Art Portrait Artist of the Year was celebrating their decade. We were celebrating our decade for Christian Hook, and it married together, and actually that was incredible. We were at Batty Art Centre, all of the finalists who had won the Portrait Artist of the Year came together to paint her in about, it was like an eight hour day, and they painted them live. In true Christian Hook fashion, Dame Judi Dench then had to choose her favourite portrait. It was quite tricky, I'm not going to lie, it was quite tricky. We have 10 finalists from the Sky's Portrait Artist of the Year for the last decade, and we have huge amounts of talent there. But Christian, by far, and I'm not biased, she chose this work. It was utterly magnificent, another accolade for Christian. This portrait was then hung in the National Portrait Gallery here in London and added another museum to his love career. I do hope you all love looking through the collection of Christian Hook's work. It is, like I've said, definitely one of the most exciting journeys you're going to take. I hope you absolutely enjoy it. I'm now going to make sure that they play you our 10 years in 10 minutes. It's very hard to put Christian Hook's career into 10 minutes, but we've tried. And it will visually give you everything that I've just spoken about. I hope you absolutely enjoy the collection. Take care. I'm always, always learning. And I'm just a constant observer. When we're faced with a new object, at first sight, we just see with our eyes what it looks like. But then we try and find out other things about it, like how it smells or whether it's soft or smooth or what texture it has. And as we go looking at all these things, we go finding out whether we like or dislike the object. That takes all of our senses. All these things constitute how we see. At some point, someday, I would love to be able to paint how I see. With all my senses. I met him in Gibraltar. Within two years, he was here in London in Clarendon Fine Arts uh, with a whole collaboration of artists from Gibraltar. And he won the Clarendon Fine Art Prize in 2012. We had our first solo show with him in 2013, which was just incredible. And that's when it just started rolling, really. And it's, I haven't looked back since. By 2014, he'd won the Sky Arts Portrait Artist of the Year. By the end of that year, he was in the Top 100 Masters book by Sir John Layton. Coming into 2015, we had another amazing solo show with him. His talent is beyond inspiring. I think he's incredible, an absolute legend and an absolute um, asset uh, to the world of art. And I'm so glad he's made his mark on it. Artists can sometimes have too many ideas and the work becomes very academic and the paint doesn't flow easily. Um, the great exponent of having ideas and being brilliant is Picasso. Well, Christian has just a little bit of that courage and that freedom and that, and that ability. The judges felt that the artist they have chosen convince them that they could take on any portrait challenge put in front of them. The Sky Arts Portrait Artist of the Year for 2014 is Christian Hook. I think this is the biggest honour I've ever had bestowed on me in my entire life. 
to have my portrait in this amazing hall of the Scottish National Portrait Gallery. Actually, what I care more about is the fact that in the, in the process of it, it happening, I had this amazing um, chance to meet this man and have this collaboration with him that I never thought was at all going to be part of the experience of sitting for a portrait. He attributed quite a lot of his getting better to his faith and I thought like, you know, having the cross and him, having him looking up um, in a way would symbolize this. He also has a, a pacemaker and on the key and I thought that the key was quite an interesting thing so I had I put the key in and um, it was 78 for 78 minutes that he was dead. In his painting of Mick Hucknall, Christian hopes to celebrate Mick's talents as a singer-songwriter and to draw inspiration from his own love of music. I think Christian's background with music plays a huge part um, in his talent, huge, because I think as a very creative artist um, and very talented artist, his music actually enhances, um, I think, his technique in painting. Any challenge that I'm given on portraiture, right, my aim is to do what music does, which is like to transport you to a specific moment in time, you know, that it actually carries you somewhere else. The anthem for Liverpool is you'll never walk alone. What does it mean to you personally? Oh, uh, I don't know how to put it into words because this is a Liverpool supporter, it's a song you sing before the game. It's a song I had at my dad's funeral. And since Hillsborough, it's become such a symbol of what we all feel about the 96 people who died. So when we sing it, it's an anthem. And it's an anthem of prayer, in a way, for them. The Althorpe Gallery houses some of Britain's greatest treasures and it's never been used for exhibition. So I was like absolutely you know, blown away when they, they took some of the works down and they had my exhibition over there. And I loved having my work you know, beside such great masters. It's been a real thrill actually to have Christian here with his work. I've always had this argument that you can have contemporary things and if they're of a high enough quality, they will fit in. And that's definitely the case here. You go in the long gallery, there are great masterpieces by Van Dyck. And then you have this wonderful collection by Christian Hook. It works very well indeed. Over the course of a few months, I traveled extensively through the Far East, visiting many countries in search of the physical manifestation of a spiritual force. I visited tribal communities, spiritual leaders, shaman, gurus, monks, mystics, rituals, temples, and everything else um, related to the subject but found little evidence of uh, channeling force at work. When I got to Kyoto in Japan, I found calligraphy masters that could scientifically measure how much of the energy force had been channeled through their work. I used the same knowledge and techniques to create this collection. As an artist, being challenged all the time is the most important thing. I'm always looking for a new concept, I'm always looking for a new way of looking at something. But although I find portraiture very interesting, the fact that I have to capture the likeness of a person is a limitation. So as an artist, what really excites me is finding new things in the mundane, really. For my next project, I want to set myself the ultimate challenge of painting something which is invisible to the naked eye, love, and all the emotions that surround that. I just see the same 16-year-old girl, like I love her. To do this, I'm going to enlist a group of people that have more in common with artists than we think. Scientists are in the business of exploring, of breaking down and of finding out things. Artists are in exactly the same business. They have a symbiosis that is brilliant, really. They are going to help me open a new doorway in art, and the results I cannot know until we finish.
So the journey itself is the important part, and it's my greatest challenge here. feels like an artist who's got a plan, he's got a technique. There's phases, very visible, obvious phases he seems to go through. You know, I'm just watching Christian at work. He looks like he's stirring a pot. And he's very gestural and he really throws it on. And I don't know how wild the game is, actually, but Judy is appearing and you get the essence of the person. And when you talk to him, he says it is important that there's certain sort of psychological depths to it. I think I'm getting there, but everything's so fast. Um changing all the time, so it's difficult to tell how well I've done it, you know? I just carry on working until, I, until it stops. We have to look closer. Oh, I say, neon orange is good. That brightens me up a bit. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. You don't know what you're doing. You do know what you're you doing. You don't know what you're doing. I think you do. I pretend. And no, I definitely <laughs> think you do. <laughs> oh, I suppose I'm going to choose this one. Christian.